this story plenty before. Icarus Tyree is one of the most exciting up-and-coming artists on the scene today. In 2020 alone, they wrote and released over 50 songs. And today, we had the pleasure of sitting down with them in our studio to ask them a couple of questions about their music. Am I looking at you, or am I looking at you? Yeah, you can look at me. Okay, okay. Hi, my name is Icarus Tyree, and I'm here interviewing myself about my music. So, Icarus, can you tell me a little bit about how you got started writing music and performing in general? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I, I've been doing musical stuff my whole life, uh, getting into singing really early. I started playing violin when I was probably about seven years old, eight years old, and I just sort of kept doing it. I, I don't want to be like, oh, I have a musical talent or whatever, but I, I don't know, I feel like I hear music pretty well, and I really like listening to it, obviously. Um, when I was in middle school, I sort of dabbled in songwriting. Um, when I was in high school, I got a ukulele for the first time, and that was what really allowed me to sort of try writing more songs because I had the components right there. And so I got a guitar for Christmas last year. So I've been learning how to play that. And because of that, I've been able to sort of write songs that are originals and standalone. Um, so my songwriting has really taken off this year, but through my college experience has been when it's really happening. Yeah. So you identify your genre as attic punk. Can you tell me a little bit about what that means? Yeah, um, genres are just kind of made up. You just sort of make up what you want to call your music. And the thing about me and my musical experiments is that I don't really stick to one specific genre. Like some of my stuff is sort of folky or more kind of country, I guess, and then there's other stuff that I do that's more like rock and roll. I use my like electric guitar, my bass and stuff, and then I've dabbled in various places. I've tried a little bit of electronic stuff. Um, I've tried a little bit of sort of, I did a surf rock thing. I have a lot of vocal things. So in order to encapsulate all of that, technically on my band camp, I'm now listed as alternative because I used to be acoustic, but now I make music with electric instruments as well. Um, so I came up with the term attic punk. It's in sort of, it's in conversation with the idea of garage rock um, because I made a lot of the music that I released sort of this year and this summer in the attic of my house. And attic punk has a similar kind of homemade feel as garage rock, but I, I don't know, I imagine the aesthetic of attic punk as like woodsier and a little more solitary than garage rock, which is more concrete and metal and usually a, a group situation. So that's sort of, that's just sort of what I went for there. And punk because, you know, the system and um, I'm excited to be trying to make my own rules when it comes to music and I, I like punk, so I'm, throw my hat into the ring as Alexandria's premier attic punk artist. Am I moving my hands too much? I think you're fine. Okay. So you have written a lot of music using the formats of these month long challenges. Can you speak a little bit about why you do that? I don't remember why I did Songtober for the first time. It was 20, 18 in the fall and I at this point was only playing the ukulele and I decided that every day in October I wanted to write and record and release a new original song and so I tried doing this and some of them I think are fun some of them some of them are sort of very dear to me some of them I have released on my band camp or on various really just my band camp specifically um because they're all on my youtube page and some of them were really just uh improvisational kind of things just sort of practice in understanding what it's like to look at a song and write a song 
Um, so then when I wanted to write more music over the summer, I had the idea to do this format again in July where I wrote and recorded a song every single day and released it. And that came, gave me a lot of, a lot of fruit. It, it bore a lot of fruit, that idea. Um, but I wanted to try a little bit harder to focus down on my songs and refine them a little, uh, using different instruments and stuff and having a little bit longer to produce them. So that's why I did the song timbre format where I took two days for each song. And that allowed me to become a little bit more creative with um, instrumentals and sleep on all the songs a little bit uh, instead of writing and recording and releasing just sort of bam bam bam. Uh, so that was a really interesting experience because it had the same kind of um, necessity and pressures of the Songtober challenges but it, it, it encouraged more experimentation and that's when I was doing my music videos, that's when I was doing really just, yeah, just more experimentation. And that's why that one, I put it out as an album because I had pretty much produced all the songs. I'm still working on production. It's one of my weaknesses, not weaknesses. It's one of my places I have the most room to grow uh, is taking the songs that I write, which I feel confident in the sound that I have, but translating that to uh, a good sounding song that sounds like it could be on a CD, be on a radio. Yeah, so I'm still working on trying to get there, but in terms of writing songs, I feel like I've gotten much better at being able to do that on the fly. And can you tell us about your latest release, Benchwarmers? Benchwarmers is a collection of songs that I wrote in August, sort of on the heels of Songtober in July, uh, that I just didn't get around to slash didn't ever have the right time to produce and release them. Some of them because I wanted to do big things with them. Um, specifically, I don't even remember what I titled it in the end. May You Find Your Way Toward Me is something that I thought about doing like this whole viola thing with and all this ex experimental kind of things. And then some of them, like uh, my irregularity that came of that just sort of died because I I liked it in concept a lot but it is a hard to play and be just sort of a weird song but then at the end of the year last year when I sort of was looking at what I had and I had these five songs that were unreleased and I decided that I wanted to put them out and instead of trying to get them to be perfect, I preferred to just make them and give them out so I could move on to other projects. So what do you see as next for you? Yeah, what's next for me? Um, so right now I'm, uh, I'm in a different space. I'm in my college dorm. Uh, I'm finishing up my senior spring, or I'm about to start it. I'm finishing up my senior year of college. So I'm in a bit of a different space creatively in terms of the time and the noise level that I can make and also what instruments I have access to. I brought my acoustic guitar and I have my keyboard um, for various garage band synth sounds, etc. It's all sorts of things. That's how I do my drums. That's how I do any sort of, any sort of non-instrument instrument. That's what I do. Um, so my, my um, avenues are a little bit more limited. However, I'm still hoping to put some things together. It'll be a little bit slower because I'll have to focus more of my time on doing work now that I'm here. And I'm hoping that we can get, I can get a couple things out uh, that I'm really excited about. Um, I have, for, like, for example, I have a lot of songs kicking around that I have yet to make any produced versions of. Um, and I've been writing a little bit, uh, not as much. I might try, who knows, I might try a challenge or something. Those have been really helpful for getting me to just sort of do. Well, I know that I, for one, am definitely looking forward to whatever you're up to next. 
Last question. If you had to give advice to young songwriters, what would you say? My advice is, I cannot believe I'm asking myself this. Um, I guess what I found most helpful is the idea of quantity over quality and not saying that you shouldn't spend time to make good things but sometimes what you have to do is just make 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 not thinking about the quality of something um that way you sort of open up the the channels and practice making making something takes practice you're not always going to be able to get enlightened with your the song of your dreams you might play around with a bunch of different things and have fragments and some of them might be worth picking up and some of them are just things that you did and all of it is useful and important so I think letting go of the preciousness of creation is something that is important and especially when it comes to music so try a lot of things and also record it uh, voice memos is how I like to record all my demos and stuff even when it's just like little 10 second fragments of something that maybe will turn to something someday and maybe will inspire a different song. I've got a couple songs that I kind of used salvaged parts from other songs to make that I'm really excited with because the seed of that idea was sort of present in that experimentation. Awesome. That's our time. Thank you so much for joining us today um, to have this interview. Thank you so, thank you so much for having me. Um, it's been a real treat. Yeah, um, have, have a good one. I Thanks, you too. I guess I'm going to stand up and go. Yep. Yeah. Uh, see you later.